So we know Samsung will have the unpack event in a couple weeks where they will be talking about the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. And, you know, that is something that really did dominate headlines over the past couple of weeks. But we can't forget about the Samsung Galaxy Fold because it looks like they have a fix for this phone. And here is pretty much what they said are the fixes to be expected. So the first thing, the top protected layer of the Infinity Flex display has been extended beyond the bezel, making it apparent that it is an integral part of the display structure and not meant to be removed. The other thing they said is Galaxy Fold features additional reinforcement to better protect the device from external particles while maintaining a signature foldable experience. The top and bottom of the hinge area have been strengthened with newly added protect protection caps, additional metal layers underneath the Infinity Flex display has been included to reinforce the protection of the display. The space between the hinge and the body of the Galaxy Fold has been re reduced. So, if you haven't been following the Galaxy Fold, and which I know a lot of you guys, if you are in the tech community, you know. And even if you're not, I'm pretty sure you heard about the news on various sites, whether it be it popped up on your phone or just turn on the TV or the news. But this device was supposed to be released in April. And Samsung had the idea that, look, a lot of people, they want something that is really the perfect mix between a phone and a tablet. And yes, we got phones larger with the phablet, something that they created with the, the Note series. But there are still someone who wants something a little bit larger. You know, maybe not quite 10 inches as far as tablet, but somewhere in the middle. The problem is, how are you going to, you know, keep up with it without always having a backpack? And the idea is, well, you fold it. You fold it in half and it becomes the size of a phone. And this is opening up a market of ideas which you can do with this device. And they're not the only one who's really pursuing it. In fact, they were not the first ones. But of all the devices out there, you know, Samsung may have the better looking of the devices. And as we continue to look at what they're trying to do with the Fold, it, it have a lot of people excited. The problem is that it did have some issues. And unfortunately, a lot of the issues that were found in April were picked up by reviewers, and it should have been picked up by, you know, Samsung themselves. But they did find it, and they are taking it, or they did take it in, take it back to get it repaired and resolve those issues. But not everyone is quite on board with these fixes. You know, uh, T-Mobile, who were, were one of the carriers along with AT&T, that was going to be the place that was going to have it where people can purchase it. Well, T-Mobile said they're not going to carry it. And... Pretty much what they told The Verge is, well, T-Mobile will not carry the Galaxy Fold because we already offer a, offer customers a wide range of the latest smartphones. Please reach out to Samsung for any further inquiries. And here are my thoughts on the, the Fold. Because, again, it's still going to be debuted at $2,000. And that is a lot of money for a device. And I understand, again, why T-Mobile and will kind of you know hold off on trying to carry it because you know there will be questions about whether samsung actually fixed all the problems and plus we continue to hash out that this is a year one device and there are going to be other problems that are going to creep up because you know until other people get a chance to play with it and put it through the everyday stresses of uh, the environment that they're in how they use it uh, just really in the hands of people in general. Until that happens, you're not going to be able to, to figure out what will come up of the device. And I can understand that people already knowing that this phone did have some of the problems may complain that, okay, you guys knew this have a, had a problem. And you sold it anyway and you didn't fix it. And you sold it for this much well, this amount of money, $2,000, you know, and it has problems still. So I'm not happy with it. You know, I demand you guys fix it. And, you know, T-Mobile right now, they're doing a much better job with customer service. You know, I currently, well, I had switched to T-Mobile about a couple of months ago from AT&T, and I've been pretty much happy with their service. 
the customer service has improved a lot. You know, and I, I think a lot of credit goes to their CEO for that, you know, who is very adamant about, you know, going everything he can to help their customers. You know, if you have a problem, especially if you're on Twitter, you say, I, I got this problem with T-Mobile. You know, I've actually, you know, posted something where I had some questions and to have the CEO respond to your Twitter account say, oh, yes, you know, um, here's the uh, response to your question. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to have this person reach out to you to continue to, you know, address you whatever concerns you have. You know, that is big. So with T-Mobile doing everything they can to improve their customer service and customer relations, I can see why they wouldn't want to put this on their network and just open up, you know, a Pandora box of issues, especially when now at this point, why would you need it? You know, with it being released in September, you're going to have the new iPhone out there, the new Pixel out there, and a couple of other devices that are going to be out there. So you really do not need this to be a part of your portfolio. And for Samsung, April was a good time to put it out there because it was right there where people can play with it in that summer or spring and summertime, right before the fall release. And now you, what you're going to have, again, a the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus, which are already going to have a high price tag as it is, there really is no need for someone to really want to gravitate to that. In fact, I would say so as someone, if you had to choose between the Galaxy Fold and the Note 10 Pro, I probably would lean or point them more to, towards the Note 10 Plus because I just feel like that would be more proven and I don't think you'll have more issues with... a problems creeping up with that device with that said as far as the more interesting of devices i'm still liking what samsung doing to fold and for me even though i may not pick up year one device i look forward to see where we go with year two and year three and i really hope we see more manufacturers you know continue on with this because i want to adopt it i really do i just don't want to adopt a price for it and i know a lot of customers who probably feel the same way they're saying they really would like to adopt this device. They just don't want to pay that type of money, not for a phone. Even though you're preaching this as pretty much the perfect phone and tablet hybrid, there are just so many issues we're seeing in the phone as far as aesthetically alone that we want to see improve. You know, that it's, it's hard for us to really pick it up, especially now where we're seeing phones get to the point where they're just getting so much better. So, yeah, I mean... We got to continue on to see this thing evolve and grow to a point where it will overtake the phones and people will be willing to gravitate to it. But, hey, that's where we at with the Samsung Galaxy Fold. So if you're actually still interested in it, you will be able to pick it up in September. And if you do decide to pick it up, I'm curious to see you know, what issues came up, what you like about it in your own personal review. So, yeah, you know, I look forward to seeing those people or people pick those up and adopt it.